You know, picking a career is tricky business. Like, what, you want me at the wizened age of 18 to pick a career path that'll last longer than I've been alive for? What do you mean the answer is yes? Somehow, miraculously, despite having no idea what I originally signed up for, I am now approaching my final year of dental school after five very long years. Along the way, I learned some very important lessons, but those lessons require some context. And for that, we will have to go back, way back. Oh, and I should mention, this might hurt. He was a sort of ferocious, quiet beauty. The sort that wouldn't let you admire it. The sort of beauty that just always hurt. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. So if I had to describe first year in one word, it would be vast. It felt like I had this almost unlimited number of opportunities in front of me. New people, new places, in fact, a whole new life. It was extremely exciting. However, cool as everything was, I quickly realized that adjusting to university life was way more overwhelming than I originally anticipated. One of the biggest problems was that I came into university after years of just being a mostly introverted and anxious kid, so I couldn't help but feel a bit lost. Now all of a sudden I found myself surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of other students, all of whom seemed way more confident and way more well adjusted than I did. So I sort of resorted back to the only thing that I felt comfortable in, which was studying. English, philosophy, sociology, psychology, molecular biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and even a dash of medical Greek and Latin. Suffice to say, there was a lot to keep me busy, and so in a weird turn of events, despite all the opportunities at my disposal, I spent the majority of my first year either in the library or at home, studying and reading. But don't get me wrong, it wasn't all bad, because it taught me my first big lesson. Everything comes at a cost. During that first year of university, I emerged from all the textbook pages at the top of my class, but the price I paid was most of my social life. So as second year approached, I decided that was all about to change. Five simple words. A girl with red hair. So if first year was all about general science, then second year was all about medical science. Our academic focus shifted, this time more towards people. But at the same time, so too did my personal focus, because at the time, 
I met a girl that years later would end up becoming my clinical partner. And while I was still spending a lot of time studying, I suddenly had this other person that was always around that actually had a life outside of just dentistry. So as we spent our days dissecting cadavers, looking at bones and studying the ins and outs of the human body, I also started reflecting more and more on the anatomy of my own life and where I could start improving things, which happened just in time because very soon after, I faced something that every dental student faces at some point, my first failure. We started spending more time on the medical side of campus, learning a whole host of basic procedures such as suturing, injections, and setting up intravenous drips. However, I found these to be quite stress inducing and so when I did my practical exam, my hands ended up being so shaky that I failed the entire procedure. At first, I felt quite bad about it. I mean, how did I go from being top student to now failing a simple practical? I think one of the big reasons was because I was too scared of failing. I was too scared about having my ego bruised. But funnily enough, as I was beating myself up over failing, I realized I wasn't really too stressed about the supplementary exam because I now knew what to expect going into it. So yes, the failure sucked. It didn't feel very good. But at the same time, it also made me way more capable which taught me my second big lesson. Failure won't kill you, but it will make you smarter. Not of being, but of becoming. All right, so after surviving two years of university, we finally found ourselves in the dental hospital, surrounded by these somewhat terrifying fake patients that we called phantom heads. We used them to practice restorations mainly, um, and this one was actually mine. However, I always felt kind of bad for it because the suction tube never worked properly. So whenever I would use the dental drill, I would just completely end up drowning my poor fake patient. But despite drowning phantom heads on occasion, overall it was an extremely exciting time. It felt like we were really, for the first time, starting to learn how to become dentists. The impossible suddenly felt within reach. At least that was the plan. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. There are fears a rapidly spreading virus has... First US case has been detected. There's confirmation the coronavirus has reached Australia. China is urging its... Pretty much right as third year started, it also largely ended as we were all sent away from the hospital amidst the COVID pandemic right before the whole country went into lockdown. I was lucky in that I was able to spend it at home with family, but in terms of dentistry, suffice to say, not much progress took place. There's honestly this gap in my memory from April to July of that year as every day just played out exactly the same.
Now, that wasn't a particularly productive routine, but partway through second semester, we all found ourselves being called back to the hospital. And while life still largely took place online, there was something about that change in environment that caused the gears in my head to start turning again. We were still largely online, but I really jumped at every opportunity to try and get as much preclinical practice in as possible. However, life was still far from perfect. We collectively had to face the facts that because of the pandemic, we probably wouldn't be able to practice all of the procedures before we started getting our very own patients, which taught me, rather intimidatingly, my third big lesson. The best way to learn is to do. Close to graduation and close to each other. That's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? After a winding road of ups and downs, I suddenly found myself at the age of 21 being entrusted with patients of my own. Obviously, we were supervised, but ultimately, it was now on me to actually do the work and to provide care. There was a lot to take in with procedures such as fillings, root canals, dentures, and extractions at the forefront of my day to day. I definitely struggled, but it was also extremely exciting. So despite the struggles day by day, patient by patient, bit by bit, I started improving. I didn't have a lot of natural talent when it came to dentistry, but I made up for it with effort, and after a few months, things were really starting to look up. However, as is customary in dental school, what goes up must at some point come down and so halfway through the year I injured my hand after an accident and on my 22nd birthday my physician informed me that one of the bones in my wrist was completely shattered. Now shockingly turns out you need a working wrist to do dentistry so a surgeon kindly put a screw in my wrist and sent me on my way except I was booked off for a few months and essentially banned from doing surgical work which meant that I probably wouldn't meet my clinical quotas and in turn would have to repeat fourth year. Everyone told me I needed to make peace with it, but I couldn't. I could only make war. I threw myself entirely back into dentistry, pushing away emotions and friends to make ever more room for work. The problem was that it was working, or at least I thought it was. I taught myself how to do one-handed dentistry and pushed myself to cram a whole semester's worth of dental school into just two months. I was racking up weeks and weeks worth of clinical quotas in just days and had turned the marathon of dental school into a sprint. I was fueled by frustration and anxiety, but then my fourth big lesson revealed itself Stress is a dirty fuel, and so as the year wound to a close, much like grains of sand, my energy and my hope gradually slipped through my fingers. We're here because we're here because we're here because we're here we're here because we're here because we're here because we're here at the start of 2022 i came back to the hospital ready to do fourth year again but Maybe ready isn't exactly the right word because at the time I felt quite defeated and 
honestly just, just sad that my friends were moving on without me and that in many ways I kind of had to start from scratch. But then lies the problem, that idea of had to. They say when you're at rock bottom, the only way is up. And so I couldn't help but wonder, what if I changed my perspective? I really doubled down on documenting my dental school experiences because it was a way for me to be both the storyteller and the story told. Extra patience and extra work, the start of a whole new social life and a whole extra year of being a student instead of a dentist. Originally, I saw these as things that I had to do, but after a while, I realized these were actually fantastic opportunities that I got to have. And so the more I reflected on everything, the more those lessons from my past came rushing back. Number one, everything comes at a cost, but because I was writing very few tests as a repeater student, I found myself with an abundance of time to spend. I used that time to start some new initiatives, to work with dental practices, and to build new friendships while maintaining old ones. Two, failure won't kill you, but it will make you smarter. I took note of things I struggled with the previous year while also learning about a variety of new procedures to keep improving my base of clinical knowledge. Number three, the best way to learn is to do. So I booked more extra sessions and spent more time in the lab than ever, even starting with some final year cases, all while trying to improve my craft bit by bit. Four, stress is a dirty fuel. So I switched to more sustainable sources of motivation, dedicating time and effort towards mindfulness and self-guided therapy. Which brings us to lesson five, time is always waiting. There's this immense pressure to get that title as soon as possible. But honestly, figuring things out takes time. And especially in the case of dentistry, if it was easy, then everyone would do it. But if everyone did it, how special would it be? It's the kind of thing that will break your heart and kick your ass at times. And yes, this might hurt, but it hurts with good reason, because it's a very meaningful experience and it's the kind of thing that at the end will leave you smiling. So that is my story and that is what dentistry means to me. What does it mean to you? Good luck out there. It's been a